Aldosterol biota. Again, a very important uh, uh, topic and, uh, you know, important from the perspective of uh, biotechnology, right? So, and the evolution of human life. So, uh, protosterol biota, it's what the news is exactly that scientists have discovered that fossilized remains of this particular thing inside the rock at the bottom of an ocean near Australia, right? So, what is the importance of this particular thing? So, in this particular uh, topic, we'll discuss about various, uh, various these things like, you know, uh, these remains are from the Proterozoic eon period. So, what is an eon? What are the, what are periods? What are ages? How the geological time scale is divided? So, we will have a look at the geological time scale. Right? There are various confusing words. We'll have a look at that. Right? Then it belongs to the family of organisms known as eukaryotes. So, we'll see what exactly is eukaryote. What exactly is prokaryote? That is something we will see. And we will see what is the importance of the discovery or, you know, the information that we have over here that this particular fossil fuel belongs to 1.6 billion years ago, right? So, first of all, let's start from the basics, prokaryotes and the eukaryotes, right? <clears throat> These are pro prokaryotes and these are eukaryotes. What is the basic difference? So, in prokaryotes, we do not have membrane bond. You know, these are primitive cells. You can call it primitive cells, okay? They are, you know, very rudimentary, very primitive cells, right? So, they do not have proper cell walls. They would not have, they have only single, uh, single strand of DNA. While in the uh, eukaryotic cell, we have multiple strands of DNA which are clubbed together in the form of chromosomes that we know, right? So, it will have only single strand of DNA. Then it will not have membrane, um, membrane bound uh, uh, apparatus or, you know, organelles. For example, uh, it will not even have the nucleus, right? But it will have proper nucleus, you know, everything, the, the genetic material will be within the nucleus only, right? And then there will be membrane bound organelles, for example, ribosomes and everything, uh, which is there in the cytoplasm of the cell. So, it is more organized, more sophisticated, and this is more of a primitive kind of a thing, right? That is number one differentiation. We can have a look at the difference between prokaryotes and the eukaryotes in terms of cell structure, right? They lack a distinct nucleus. That is what we have talked about. Then in terms of size, prokaryotes are going to be smaller, right? They are smaller and simpler, right? Then in terms of genetic material, uh, there is just single DNA over there and they are not associated with the histone proteins also. So what is histone proteins? That is something we'll have a look. What exactly is histone proteins and what is the use of histone proteins? That is something we will see, right? They have multiple DNAs, the eukaryotes, right? And they have the histone protein around that. We will have a look. Then in terms of reproduction, if you see, they mainly reproduce with the process of binary fission. Okay, so what are the various types of reproduction systems? That is something which we'll have a look in this particular uh, discussion. But these eukaryotes, they go through mitosis, meiosis or sexual reproduction and various other kinds of reproduction. So that is something we'll have a look at what exactly the basic, uh, basics of these reproduction techniques, right? In terms of diversity, <clears throat> They are majorly two types, the bacteria and the archaea. They have slight difference. That is why they have been demarcated into two types, right? But in but eukaryotes, you know, uh, just like, you know, uh, pro, they are protists, plants, animals, fungi, everything uh, comes under the eukaryotes. So, they are, they are single cellular, unicellular organisms and they are multicellular organisms. That is something which we have to understand. Alright, let's have a look at, first of all, the geological time scales that I talked about. So, the time period, right, is divided into multiple ranges. So, eons are the broadest, right? Eons would be the broadest. Let's say this is an eon. Now, the question which will come to your mind would be how long is this particular period? So, there is no fixed period. Why? Because this time period is not fixed by the, you know, let's say millions of years or billions of years. It is fixed by these parameters. So, something very substantial, some, some very substantial change will occur in the Earth's atmosphere or Earth's, you know, Earth's uh, physical structure or some kind of biodiversity which is there on Earth. Then the period will change or then the era will change or then the ages will change, something like that, okay? So, there are various parameters. For example, the rock, strat uh, rock stratification will change, okay? So, um, uh, earlier, there were different kinds of soil present. Now, there are different kinds of soil present entirely. So, that will be considered as one of the parameters, when the fossil records are going to change, right? There is significant difference between the fossil records uh, before this particular time and after this particular time. So again, we will uh, we will we will consider that at, that as one particular geological time scale. Then we have the isotopes, right? The, the chemical composition, the kind of minerals which are found in the soil that might change, right? Then we have the magnetic reverses. So Earth's magnetic field keeps on rotating, right? So whenever such things are whenever such things are happening, they they are considered as one period. Right. Again, some kind of global signatures, let's say climate change or some kind of mass extinction or something like that. So, all those will be considered as markers 
before and after which the geological time scale is going to change and then let's say we have the climate shift so if we have the eon which is the largest period now you know it will be considered because of some kind of uh, parameter now within the eons we'll have the eras okay so let's say eons might have multiple eras again eras will be very specific they will be based on one particular or some particular parameters right which will make them different but homogeneously if we say then you know we might have uh, same characteristics overall right then these era will be divided into periods all right again they will have some kind of distinction between them right this period might have different kind of organisms this period might have different kind of organisms something like that then these periods are going to be divided into epochs and these epochs are going to be divided into ages right so that is the smallest division that we have so this is how the geological time scale works this is the only thing that we had to know from the exams perspective you can remember the sequence it is eons eras period epochs and ages that is the sequence that you have to remember very very important all right let's have a look uh, just you know just a uh, glance on the evolution of life how life has you know evolved throughout uh, this particular journey of earth so earth's formation as we know 4.6 billion years ago earth uh, started forming right and then we have the prokaryotes as as i told you that they are the most simple ones right so prokaryotes started developing then you know photosynthesis and all started then we have the eukaryotes the prokaryotes will convert into eukaryotes multiple divisions multiple organisms started coming in right multicellular life started uh, started coming in then we have uh, the, the marine to the terrestrial so earlier you know the life was constrained or it started in the oceans right then it started moving to the terrestrial land from the land that is there right so simple marine animals then amphibians would go which can live both in the water and the land then you know reptiles would come in which will live only in the land right all those things with plants first of all plants will come right which will colonize the land and then you know insects and seed evolution and then we will see you know th the terrestrial animals coming in right amphibians reptiles mammals birds right all these things are going to come and then you know in between there was a region in there was a region in which we we call it call it as cambrian explosion cambrian explosion somewhere in this particular region right in this particular region it was cambrian explosion which was responsible for huge diversity of uh, life forms huge diversity of life forms right that is there then you know uh, birds and all will develop and then we'll have flowering plants and then a mass extinction there the dinosaurs and all got extinct some forms of dinosaur got extinct right and mammals took over isn't it then we have the predominance of mammals on the earth and that is how we homo sapiens are over here right 2 million years ago this is how we started developing so just a glance over how the evolution of life is taking place on earth now uh, uh, you remember that histone proteins is something that we talked about and we'll have a look at what exactly is chromatin so see uh, we have a dna structure like this let's say okay we have a dna structure like this so dna structure is a very big like it has multiple millions and millions of genes over there right so we but we need to club them together in a very short uh, space so that they can be accommodated in the nucleus that we have in each and every cell so how do we do it histone proteins and chromatins you know help that so when dna combines with the histone protein how exactly uh, it's done so for example uh, have you seen that particular thing on which thread is woven let's say we have this particular thing and we have threads this is how we keep the threads no the the sui dhaga right so we have over here similarly histone will be this okay histone protein is a kind of a, a, a kind of a thing or which dna will be woven like this okay and this will help in the condensation or consolidation of dna now this entire thing along with the histone protein along with the dna would be known as chromatin would be known as chromatin all right so histone protein uh, acts as the spools right spools okay on which dna will be woven it helps in condensation or consolidation of dna so that they can be placed in small spaces that is the use of histone protein so prokaryotes since they have just one uh, you know strand of dna they do not uh, need this histone protein but eukaryotes since they have multiple strands of dna that is why histone proteins is needed over there now let's have a look at the various types of reproduction so as we saw that prokaryotes are mostly for the binary fission okay so very simple what will happen in this it uh, there is there is let's a cell right it has a d it has a dna now what will happen the dna will replicate within the cell right and then because uh, with the hello cytokinesis the cell will divide into two 
something like this will happen this process will keep on going so here you know a cell division here we have the copy of dna here we have the copy of dna right and then ultimately two cells will be formed having similar dna so that is how this particular uh, binary fusion is happening which is mainly uh, popular in the prokaryotic cell now in mitosis which is which is there in the eukaryotes okay eukaryotes all right so this is the form of reproduction right creating new organism but mitosis is not it's not there in the uh, reproductive this thing it is let's say we are dividing let's say when we are growing any animal or any plant when it is growing right so there has to be cell division to make more and more cells right? that particular process is very similar to this only but it is known as mitosis right so here also we have uh, this particular cell it will have one particular thing now it has to divide so because the organism is growing again similar thing will happen the cell uh, the dna will be copied it will go on the sides and cytokinesis will start it will start breaking from here and then ultimately you know we'll have two cells all right but this is a much more complex process as compared to it has multiple phases and you know it's a much more complex process as compared to binary fission so that is a difference between binary fission and mitosis now let's have a look at meiosis so this is happening exactly this is the uh, happening in the terms of reproduction so what will happen let's say we have a cell right uh, what will happen over here is that it will reduce the amount of so let's say the sperm and the egg right they have half the number of chromosomes which are required for the uh, uh, human uh, uh, humans or any animal right so they will have half they will have half when they will fertilize they will make one complete cell so in meiosis what will happen one cell that right, will create two cells but they will have half the uh, amount of genetic material which is available over here so let's say this is the this is from the male and then we have from the female again they will have and they will create another half right and then these two will combine or these two will combine to make one particular and this will be known as the sexual reproduction that we have this comes under sexual reproduction right these things were asexual right this will become sexual so that is a difference right so in meiosis so it's again is a very a very difficult process very complex process right then we have various uh, process like budding cutting running tubers bulbs you know uh, in budding let's say uh, this is a particular tree or a particular stem a bud will come out from here the, here you know mitosis is happening localized mitosis this is known as localized mitosis cells are rapidly dividing over there and then you know kind of a, a kind of a bud is going to create and after some time it will separate and when it will separate it it will behave like a different uh, it will behave as an individual in itself so various organisms even animals and plants go for this particular thing let's say hydra is an example over here right it creates uh, it uh, reproduces with the help of budding technology then we have cutting let's say we uh, take a branch and we we cut it and plant it over there that is known as cutting again runners from the roots tubers and bulbs you know bulbs are getting created so all these things are there in terms of reproduction then we have the fragmentation so simply you know one organism will divide its one part and these two parts now uh, let's say individually they will start growing into different organisms that is what is fragmentation now parthenogenesis this is a very unique uh, type of a reproductive process here in parthenogenesis uh, the, there is no need of you know uh, the other uh, gender right so let's say there is a female okay uh, they have a egg so this egg does not require might not require the sperm or other things for fertilization this this uh, the animals which go for parthenogenesis have the capability to fertilize this egg on their own right so they do not require the uh, partner right and there are various animals which have both the capabilities they can go for sexual reproduction as well but in case let's say the male partners are less or they are scarce or some because of some kind of reasons they can even go for parthenogenesis where you know they can keep on going for reproduction and keep on sustaining the population just by fertilizing the eggs or fertilizing the things on their own that is there and sporulation is something we'll say in the fungi we have uh, seen that how you know they reproduce with the help of spores that is over there mm -hmm.